fact. When Princess Diana's baby boy fell in love with a gorgeous American starlet, we all went, ah. <gasps> then things got even better. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were married and in doing so took on the role of Duke and Duchess of the world. But now something has happened. The couple appear to want a little privacy. OK. Too much to ask? You bet. The public feel cheated, the tabloids have turned, and the blame game, much of it directed at Meghan, is fierce. Come on now, doll. It hasn't yet progressed to off with her head, but it's still a major headache for the royal family. It started so well. A dashing prince with the love of his life. Okay, I'm listening. You have my attention. The announcement of an engagement. It's beautiful. And he designed it. It's incredible. And plans for a wedding. Sure, there were a few hiccups. She's not going to tell me that I can't speak. In-laws acting like outlaws. What do you mean by that? If I had a message for Harriet to get over it, I'm your new father-in-law. But as Meghan Markle walked down the aisle to be with Prince Harry, the whole world was happy. Fast forward 15 months, the fairy tale has fractured. And one person is copping all the blame. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Andrew, what on earth has Megan done? Well, Megan seems to be a version of the Antichrist as far as Fleet Street are concerned. And it's almost a royal rite of passage you've got to go through. Yeah, right. Andrew Morton has spent a lifetime making the private lives of the royal family public. But he reckons Meghan Markle bashing has gone too far. OK. You don't know what's going on, really. And yet the, the, the kind of casual vituperation of, of Meghan and Harry is... You know, it's, it makes you shudder. I mean, it's not like she's done anything wrong. She's just basically living her life as a royal. She's, in, in my view, she's done everything right. What do you mean by that? It's quite revealing that Meghan said when she joined the royal family that she was going to hit the ground running. Unlike Morton, former Palace insider Patrick Jefferson says Meghan needs work to make it as a royal. What? Now, of course, we love people who hit the ground running. Energy, enthusiasm, motivation, let's do it. But you've got to know where you're running to and who's running with you and what are you going to say when you get there? Fact. At what should be the happiest time of the newlyweds' lives, things have gone famously awry for Meghan and, in turn, Harry too. Eyebrows were first raised when taxpayers funded their $4 million house reno. The Duke and Duchess have been criticised for demanding privacy, yet still accepting taxpayers' money for renovations on their home. <sighs> Boy. More tut-tutting when the couple kept little Archie away from public view. I mean, they could have come out in a glass carriage just to show us the baby in the christening gown. Then Meghan was slammed for acting like a snob at the tennis. This is not a private visit. If you're the Duchess of Sussex getting a freebie at Wimbledon in the VIP seat, it's not a private visit. Here we go again. And now, a further frenzy of outrage because these eco-warriors like to travel in style. A lot of people have labelled them hypocrites because they've taken four private jet flights uh, in just 11 days. What? Andrew Morton says it's just not worth the hot air. It seems to me that Meghan really should be given applause, not uh, uh, 
and bouquets rather than the attacks that she and Harry are suffering from. I don't think they're listening to you, though. Uh, Who's they? Well, the press. Has she really provoked the British media so badly? The British media are notoriously fickle. They have an antenna for when the royal family is not being entirely straight with them. And this may be why Meghan and other members of the family have taken far more control of their own image. I mean, look at all these tourists here. A lot of people. And it's a sunny day. Yeah. Well, you know who they've come to see, Harry and Meg's. They've not come to see Harry and Meg's. They've come to see the Queen. They've come to pay respect to the great British tradition of the monarchy. They've come to see real royals. I said, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. Outside the gates of the world's most famous family home, today there's only one winner in a popularity poll about young royal wives. Kate that is a billion times better. A billion, a billion times yeah. better. Meghan does not hold a candle to Kate. What do you mean by that? I'm here with British commentator Katie Hopkins. Megan's Brilliant. interesting. No, she's fickle, she's of the moment, she's this deep. Who says Stop. someone has to speak for the commoners and expose the real Meghan Markle. Katie, why do you hate Meghan so much? Uh, what has she ever done to you? Oh, uh, everything. It's my royal family, this is my country. Prince Harry is my Prince Harry. So you're jealous? I I'm not jealous. So that was a f***ing lot. Who wants to be Meghan Markle? Like, I'm unpopular. Mm. I'm known as the biggest bitch in Britain. Mm. The only person in Britain who's more unpopular than me, Meghan Markle. I don't think that's right. I think that's true. Is he all right upstairs? Katie is nothing if not outspoken. But she genuinely believes the future of the royal family is at stake unless Meghan Markle is banished forthwith. Boring. Meghan Markle is the biggest hypocrite there is. What does Meghan Markle do? Oh, we've got to save the planet, save the planet. Oh, do one good thing every day. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And then what does she do? Get on four private flights to wherever land at £400,000 a week higher and then uses up half the CO2 emissions that anyone else might have had. OK. It's pure hypocrisy. And what is she really? She's a no one. She's a divorcee. When did we want a divorcee in the royal family? She, <laughs> she wears bad clothes. When did we ask for that? We've just got so much better of our own. You Strong know, words, really maybe some embellishment, someone. but here in Britain, it's backed up by Meghan's disapproval ratings. A recent survey found the Duchess divisive and ranked her the second most disliked female royal after Camilla. There were old, knackered old sceptics like me, old, haggard women going, oh, that doesn't look very good. And then sort of the young, beautiful people going, oh, we love her social media, oh, fabulous, fabulous Beyonce. That doesn't make sense. That's the split. And the haggard ones have got even more entrenched in their hatred. And I think even the young ones are sceptical because Prince Harry's lost all of his okay. va va He is back with a spiteful, life-filled new book that's poured fuel on the flames. He says that Meghan wrote private letters to King Charles naming two royals whom she accuses of taking part in those supposedly troubling conversations about Archie's skin color. Scobie initially said he knew the names, but couldn't legally report them. But of course, he could have done outside of the UK. He could have done it in America if he wanted to, where the book is published. Could have done it anywhere. But he said he never names names, which is another of his lies. Here stops, looking out over the sea of faces, his expression serious. And yet, overnight, they were sensationally revealed, suddenly out of nowhere in the Dutch version of Scobie's book. 
journalists have been sent copies, and the book was briefly on sale in bookstores before being suddenly withdrawn in a dash by the publishers. Scobie initially said it was a translation error, which didn't really make any sense, because how do you mistranslate names? They're either there or they're not. The publisher now says it wasn't a translation error. It was simply an error. He lets out a breath, the weight of his words settling over the crowd. So, where does that leave us? In an era where my truth can trump actual truth, where accusations are enough to stain reputations forever, we have to ask ourselves, what happens when the truth finally comes out? Do we hold those who misled us accountable, or do we let them continue their reign of misinformation? Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section. Remember to click the subscribe button and enable the bell icon as well as share and like the video for more in-depth stories like this. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video.